a different kind of video since this is a game I put the most effort in and you could say it's like a love letter to a game I really like. Ok, let's get started. The programming language for this game is called Neluga. To describe it shortly, it's a system programming language with a syntax inspired by the Lua language. You might have heard about Lua in games like Roblox, Garry's Mod and many other. It has some differences. As you can see in this example, if you remove the variable types, this will be valid Lua code. Note that the language developer, Eduard, said that this is more of a C replacement. Despite being a relatively new language, it has many useful built-in libraries, organized documentation, and what I think is the best part of the language, it compiles to a readable C code. Creating bindings for C libraries is also very easy to do. I will talk about this later in the video. Speaking of C libraries, the one I used to make the game a reality is called Rayleigh. I use Rayleigh a lot in my past video. It describes itself as a simple and easy to use library to enjoy video game programming, and I totally agree with that. As you can see here, you have different sub describing functions to handle the window creation, mouse, keyboard, shaders, files, textures, etc. Something cool about Rayleigh and the C language is that it is possible for this game to be playable on browsers from both computers and mobile devices, since Rayleigh can handle both mouse and keyboard and also the touch screens. This means you don't need to download the game to play, and that's something I was looking for when making this game. Let's now move on to the making of the game. The first thing is, at least for me, the hardest part of making a game drawing the characters. Normally I will use free assets from the internet, but since this is not possible, I was forced to make them myself. To increase the difficulty, I had to use in-game screenshots and Google images as references, because I'm dumb and I don't know how to handle 3D files. In my case, I like to use Photoshop. Luckily for me, the characters aren't very complex to draw. Don't ask me to make human characters though, since I don't know how anatomy works and they will look like typos in dolls. Both the player and the boss consist of three animations, idle, walking, and attacking. Now, for the player's movement, making it to react to the keyboard was easy. I just change the angle based on the key press and move the character accordingly. The movement on mobile was painful to implement, and it still has issues, but I decided to go with it anyway. We have three buttons, weapon, movement, and super. The movement is simple, I should read the angle between the center of the button and whatever the player press. Same thing with the weapon and the super. I say it's simple to make it short, but in reality it took quite a while to make it work properly. Sort of. Anyway, now that we have characters, let's move on to the map. The easiest way to make a map is, of course, making a map maker. The map consists of a 60x60 60 60 tile set with three obstacles a barrel, a wall, and a box. With this map maker, I can place a background tile and then move around and start placing the obstacle. When I'm done, I hit the key to save the map and the map is saved as a binary file. If I read that file the same way it was written, I can recreate the map in the game. The next thing in the list is the collision between the player and the map. 
there's a million different ways to handle. You can make a loop that checks if the player is touching every single collider in the map. Obviously, running this every frame is very inefficient. What I did is to split the map in four chunks. So first I check what chunk the player is, and now I can check if the player is touching any obstacles that are inside that chunk. This is more efficient than the previous method since the number of iterations decreased. Let's talk about the bullets. The bullet system works pretty much the same as in the game. To make the bullets collision to work, I add them a very small hitbox which is used to check for collision. Also note how the bullets are not in a straight line. This is because I set a small angle offset before spawning the bullet. Now that we have the player, let's move on to the robot boss. To make the robot follow the player, we have to implement pathfinding. Instead of reinventing the wheel, I decided to use an existing implementation made in C, which uses the ASTAR algorithm. Here's how you implement a C library in Lua. You set the functions with C import to set the C function, C include to set the file, and not deco, which stands for no declaration, to avoid redeclarating the function. Here's how it works. If the bus doesn't have a path, set the path. If the distance is less than 2.8 times 32, or the path node is less than 2, start the melee attack. If the entity is too far away, recalculate the path after a certain time. To avoid a certain bug that I can't remember now, instead of following the exact tile where the player is standing, I check for the 8 neighbor tiles, and set to follow the first empty one. Finally, let's talk about the attack pattern. I try to follow the same pattern of the game. I have to take into account that it's only one player and not three. First, the robot can only shoot lasers. After the first minute, the robot can charge towards you. After the first minute and 35 seconds, the robot gets purple and the damage and speed is boost. After 2 minutes and 30 seconds, the robot gets red, the damage and speed is boost even more, and it shoots a small missile that does a lot of damage. And that's pretty much it. That was a very, very brief summary of the game's code. Playtime is over. Only she will be